Uh, so we're rolling into Esperance with uh, 800 k's to get with sorry with 800 meters to go to the fuel station and 13 kilometers on the tank. We had 190 liters of fuel range up our sleeve and we have burnt a bit. 190 kilometers of fuel range up our sleeve and we have burnt that entire range with the hills and the winds. What you're trying to say is I nailed it. Nailed it. Though. I'll, I'll say you nailed it when we get to the actual station. We'll have over 10 kilometers of range. We've got over 10 kilometers of range to go. <laughs> No, I don't know what you're worried about. Yeah, Well, good day and welcome back to another episode. The situation has changed a little bit. So a couple of days ago, we got a phone call from home saying that uh, one of our relatives had been emergency airlifted to hospital and needed brain surgery. So we just packed up and we just started closing the gap between us. Yeah, we'd left Betty's Beach and we're heading to Bremer Bay and then had planned to go and explore Esperance and the area around Esperance. We got as far as Bremer Bay and pulled up for the night when we got the news. So we made the quick decision the next, mor the, the next morning we were going to leave and, uh, and just start heading east and start close the distance between us and the east coast where our, most of our family is. Uh, we had a little over 3,000, almost 4,000 kilometres, 3,850 kilometres between where we were and uh, where we wanted to be. So we've never felt so far from home and it was, you know, it's, it's, I guess it's a trade-off of travelling full time and it's just one of those things. But... We made the decision to start, yeah, basically to start closing that distance. So we did three days, basically, of pretty full-on driving, big days. Uh, but the news continued to get better, thankfully, as we so as we were travelling. We got good news that the surgery went well, um, that the rec recovery was going well. We've decided now to slow right down. So we're halfway across the Nullarbor. We've just free camped off the edge of the Nullarbor. This episode, we're going to be continuing our, our trip east and uh, and heading into South Australia. We should cross the border soon. Uh, and yeah, we can't wait to share with you guys some of the little uh, nooks and crannies of the Nullarbor. It's not just a big, wide open, flat expanse, yes. is it? Yeah, no, it's just full of hidden little treasures all the way along. And the more you know, the more you realize there's, that is here. So yeah, we'll hopefully show you a few little gems and along the way to keep you entertained when you have to do this trip hopefully under better circumstances than us. And I just want to say a huge thank you. We put a post on our Instagram and Facebook and you have just been phenomenal. Like the amount of support and love, it's just blown us away. Like it's unbelievable how beautiful this little community is. So, yeah, it's been unreal. Yeah, you guys are unreal. And we're so lucky that we know that this news is getting better. And you just think for some people when they get these phone calls, it's not always the case. So absolutely, yeah. Like, yeah, it's been a really, it's been a really emotional time. Mm. Yeah, so the rest of the southwest is gonna have to wait. Unfortunately, it can wait. We'll we'll hit that another time. So um, yeah, we'll explore around Esperance another time. But for now, we're gonna go and explore the Nullarbor, and can't wait to show you that. The kids are waiting in the car, so we better get a wriggle on. My arm's falling off holding this camera up. Uh, so yeah, let's hit the road and go and see what we can find. All right, let's let's show you around.
I think I can. Capstan K. That is where they're sealing into that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. We're going to go and have a look, eh? It says you're not allowed to go in it. Capstan's Cave. This is crazy. I had no idea that the Nullarbor had all these caves and some of them even have water in them where you can go deep cave diving and it is crazy. Mind blown. Like hidden treasures of the Nullarbor. Like, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Like, what is this doing here? How, like, it's just a sidetrack off a rest area. You follow it along. There's absolutely no sign postage other than wiki camps and you then just have to take the side tracks off the side track to follow it here. But it's pretty cool when you get here. There's, it's just, I don't know, like, it explains why this place is a nature reserve because we were wondering yesterday, we were driving along like, what are you protecting here? But it makes sense now. There's like a whole ecosystem of caves along the Nullarbor and Crazy. Let's go check it out. Holy smokes. No, I told you we couldn't go in it. Holy smokes. Wow. That is it's not just a little cave, it's bloody massive. is bloody massive. <laughs> it's huge. I can't even see the bottom of it. It never ends. That cave never ends. It never ends deep. Yeah. It just goes deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. Yeah, so this is the first of many caves along the Nullarbor. We, this one's only about 10 kilometers from where we camped last night. Uh, I'm not sure how many of them we're gonna visit. They're all off little side tracks all over the place. We're gonna try and visit a couple and check them out. Most of them are closed, you can't go into them. Um, this one's completely collapsed anyway, but yeah, we're gonna go check a few out and then uh, keep punching on towards the South Australian border. So time to get back in the car, I think. Let's uh, shoot on. Rightio, so not too much further down the highway, only another 10k or so if you're heading east like us obviously. Uh, from where we were is the next cave, which is the Murrah L Evelyn Cave. This one's a lot easier to get to, much shorter track, the track's in reasonable condition, just take your time, it's um, only a couple of k's off the highway. 
The other one was a bit, bit tricky to find. This one's really easy to get to and a lot more impressive, to be honest. If you're yeah. only, only going to do one, I'd be doing this one. There are a heap more caves in the area. Don't know how many more we'll get to, but it's been really cool just as a, to stop off and check them out. Like, yeah, like Liz was saying before, not something you'd expect. Uh, something I certainly didn't know that Nullarbor was well known for was all these caves and sinkholes and things. So Probably the deepest dive I've ever seen. Yeah, it's one of the biggest ones I've seen too. Well, that's enough driving for today, I think. We've just pulled up, tucked in down near the coast behind Eucla. So we're not far from the border now, I think it's only about 10, 12 k, something like that to the border. We'll cross over tomorrow into South Australia. So that'll be the, our last night tonight in Western Australia. It's kind of mixed feelings about that one, but anyway, Eucla's the cheapest fuel I could find while on the, our crossing. Definitely recommend getting yourself a good app for checking fuel. We use the uh, Fuel Map app. I'll leave a link to it below, but um, made by the same people that made Wikicamps. It's just a really good app for keeping an eye on fuel prices, and they vary significantly. Um, on our as we're heading across the Nullarbor here, they're varying by over forty cents a litre between servos. So when you're buying one hundred and forty litres, that's fifty or sixty bucks a tank difference. So it's definitely worth uh, worth your while picking and choosing where you fuel up. And that's the beauty of having the long range tank too, is we've got a bit more flexibility with that. But uh, yeah, there was there was some deer fuel. We needed a little splash and dash to get us to uh, to Eucla. So we just threw 30 liters in just to get us through rather than fueling up. It was 20 cents more than it is here at Eucla. So yeah, I think, I think it's well worthwhile. A little bit of extra effort and a bit of time planning and save yourself every dollar you can, I reckon. So we're just tucked in the dunes here, just a little free camp tonight down the bottom of the hill from Eucla and uh, yeah, we'll be hitting the road again tomorrow. Just something else to be aware of, um, we made this mistake or I made this mistake, I thought there was a quarantine um, for fruit and veg at the border in WA, so we've used up all our fruit and veg and we're going to be doing the rest of the Nullarbor without any fresh fruit or veggies because there's nowhere really to stock up. So the quarantine stops not until you reach Sejuna. So Keep your fruit and veg until you hit to Sejuna and then there's the quarantine and then you get rid of it and then you restock after that. So if you're coming the other way though, if you're coming from South Australia towards WA, it is at the border though. So yeah, just saying that I didn't know. Not much else to report today after we visited those caves this morning. She was pretty much just punching out caves and cruising along, playing tag with the truckies and yeah, watching everyone else head off on their holidays, so not much else to report. We'll see you guys in the morning.
you've been watching us for a while and you watched right back, where were we? On our way to Arkarula in the Flinders Ranges. And we had a trouble with the stone stomper bracket where the screw snapped off. And I said, I drilled out the other side and replaced it with bolts. And then I said, I'd do the same to the other side. Well, it might surprise you, I, ne I never did that. And here we are in the middle of the nullarbor and it's happened again, the other side snapped. So that'll teach me for not, uh, not doing it the first time. So this time, unfortunately, uh, I haven't noticed it as early. It's been dragging for a little bit. It's damaged the stone stomper a little bit, but it's also meant that the pin's eventually fallen out of the D-shackle and I've lost the D-shackle pin as well as the stone stomper bracket. So for now, it's probably just gonna be a temporary, <laughs> I say temporary, it could stay like that for a while, a temporary zip tie solution uh, just to get us back on the road and then I'll have to come up with uh, a better solution moving forward. But uh, for now, yeah, I think it's gonna be zip tied on and get on with life. <laughs> Big zip tie, that'll do it. Fuck, if I just had that pin, I could put that back in there. Ah, I think I'm gonna have to rethink. <laughs> Something else. So I don't know how the zip tie is really gonna work. There's nothing to really zip tie it to that's gonna keep it tight enough. So I found a spare D shackle. I think I'm just gonna put a put the pin back in the shackle and just drill a hole through that cross member uh, where it was mounted before and just put the pin of the shackle straight through the hole and who needs a bracket, right? <laughs> Sweet. All right, so I've put that shackle, just pinned straight through, drilled a hole in the cross member, and then I've just used a bit of tie wire there just to hold the pin through the eye of the pin so that can't come undone now. So it should be a temporary, permanent, temporary solution. Let's get out of here, eh? Let's get on the road. Yeah. Right, it got so serious, I had to tie my hair up and take my hat off. See how serious this repair was. I'm pretty lucky to have a husband like Simon. He just knows how to fix everything. I would just be throw my hands up in the air and go, oh well, we're done now. Take it off, it's broken. We're about 10 k's across into the South Australian side of the border and the highway now follows the coastline much, much closer. So really excited about this section of the trip because this is where you get those epic views from the top of the cliffs. We've just pulled up here to this uh, little rest area, rest stop and check out that view. It is just unreal. You can see for miles in every direction. It's a little bit hazy today on the horizon. Hopefully we'll get a, a clear day in the next couple of days as we make our way along. But the Bunda Cliffs are not far to the east of us. We're gonna head that way now. We might even end up camping there tonight and just chilling out, watching the sunset from up on the cliffs, so. That sounds amazing. Is that a fly, just, was it? Yeah, I was, was, a, I was just, you know, Shoe the fly, out. shoe fly. Helping you out. All right. Let's punch do this. out a few Let's more go see what South Australia has to offer. Small day in the car today. I think we're not going to do a huge day. Yeah. We'll just go and poke along, do a few Ks, and uh, yeah, go and check out these cliffs. We've been hanging for this for a while, so really excited for this bit. Yeah, absolutely. As you know, we've got a family member in Newcastle Hospital and that we're trying to get back to. We've just heard that we can't actually visit them for another two weeks due to COVID restrictions, which is totally fine because, you know, we want everyone to be safe. So we're going to spend a couple of weeks slowing down and going through and then make our way up there. So. Went. 
Oh, I don't like you, Cliff. So Sam and I are just chatting with these flies. <laughs> and um, a truckie just overtook us and Simon got jumped on the UHF and told him it was good to go. And the truckie didn't didn't talk back to him and he, Simon's a bit upset. <laughs> He's like, didn't want to have any banter with me. Oh my goodness, it's so windy. Like, look at this. It is insane. Holy shit. This is incredible. The cliffs are ridiculously high, but it is windy. Well, not too many Ks today. <laughs> we didn't get too far down the road. We just got to the Bunda Cliffs, so just the sort of very start of them. Just found it, snuck in a little sort of unmarked track and somewhere we can camp all to ourselves, which suits us perfectly. We're not that far off the highway, but far enough, there's no noise. It is bloody windy though. It is absolutely howling east, southeast. So yeah, we're, it, we're gonna have a bit of a windy evening, but I think it'll be worth it for one night to get the cracking view. You should, like, yeah, as the sun drops over the, over the horizon over here, it's gonna look unbelievable. The cliffs are so impressive. The, the video probably isn't going to do the scale of the cliffs justice, but they are incredible and stretch as far as the eye can see. Looking forward tomorrow to going and checking out some of the other little spots along the way to have a look at them. And then, uh, yeah, then we'll roll into another bull roadhouse. Then we've got a few things up our sleeve there. We're going to try and get off the main air highway and go for a bit of an explore. So we'll let you know as that plan comes together, but that's plan A at the moment. We'll see if we can make it happen. And we've got young Harrison starting. He's got his first day of school in a couple of days. So he's doing school of the air. So we need to uh, need to get him some service so he can jump on Zoom with his teacher and all of that jazz. So he'll be doing his first day of school from the, null from the Nullarbor somewhere. We just got to figure out where that's going to be. So anyway, we will, uh, we're going to rip into a nice easy dinner tonight, quick and easy pasta dinner and then uh, going to kick back and watch this sun go down. Can't wait. I, I was just thinking though, if we were at the Bunda Cliffs, the marked one, there might have been another caravan as a windbreak, and that could have been really handy. <laughs> I'd probably sacrifice having somewhere all to myself for that windbreak at the moment. Everything is like rattling, so it's going to be a little, maybe a noisy night. Hopefully it calms down as the sun sets. We'll see. I should say too, we love our induction cooking. Like, yeah, it's we don't have induction in built in into the van. We uh, we just have a little portable induction plate, which gives us perfect versatility. We can, uh, you know, we can use gas if we're low on power or, or if we're trying to conserve power. But when we're traveling like we are now, and we're driving most days and we're getting plenty of sun, uh, plenty of charge, we've normally got power to spare and some. So being able to use electric for cooking is ideal and obviously induction's extremely efficient. Quick, easy, clean, all those benefits as well. So. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a perfect night tonight. Quick, easy stop and uh, just quick overnighter, plenty of power, get the induction rolling and get some pasta on.
Daddy. Oh. Thanks, Maisie. And so the uh, wind picked up a little bit last night. <laughs> when I say a little bit, we are in a cyclone, I think. <laughs> it's horrendous. And it's going to be a headwind this morning, which will be fun. Lizzie's been up this morning and seen the sunrise, and I've been looking at the back of your eyelids. Yeah. It was a really beautiful sunrise. It was definitely worth getting up for. I don't think we'll be uh, making too much progress today. We'll just finish our coffees and get packed up. In, how long has it been since we did a load of washing? Three, three weeks probably since we did a load of washing. We so. are running dangerously low. It's getting a, it's getting it's getting a bit desperate the situation with washing. So <laughs> we don't need to go into too much detail. No, how desperate it is, but just use your imagination. So the plan today is probably just to sneak up the road to well as much as a six ton car and caravan can sneak, but we're going to sneak up to. Uh, to the Nullarbor Roadhouse and have a bit of an eyeball at that. We might book in there for an... I hope you can hear us over the kids. We're going we're gonna to book in there for a night, I think. There's enough service there for Harrison to do his call. I think that's going to be the plan. We can get water there as well, which would be nice to top up, have a good shower, get some washing done, go for an explore, get Harrison's school done, and then we'll shift off tomorrow morning. So, yeah, I think that'll be today's plan. We'll get uh, get these coffees finished. Get packed up, which will take all of two, two hours, three hours, because we've only just pulled up for the night. So it'll be a quick one. Quick three hours. And then we'll be back on the road, so we'll see you at lunchtime. <laughs> well, we're in the car, on the road, at a new record time. It's ten past seven. Except we crossed the bloody border yesterday, so <laughs> it's actually 9.30. But anyway... Looks like time differences doesn't worry us. We're still hopeless at getting out of camp at a decent time. But anyway, we're on the road. That wind has not let up, but on the plus side, it has swung around a little bit. So it's gonna be a hectic cross breeze now. It's, anyway, we'll still just crawl along, get up to Nullarbor Roadhouse and make a plan from there. We're good to go. Good to go. You good to go, Jamesy? Harrison, good to go? Good to go. All right, let's do this, eh? Like the old building. Good. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty cool. There's lots of like little, um, what do you call those things? Like replicas? No. Just old artifacts, artifacts. and stuff. Yeah, There's yeah. old artifacts in there. It's really, really cool. Yeah, it's cool. Now, the plan's changed again, as it tends to. Today, as we mentioned, it's a horrendously windy day. Everyone sort of mentioned it. <laughs> Everyone's struggling. We're struggling. Everyone's struggling with the wind. So we're not going to travel too far today. We were going to stay here. The internet service isn't great. We really want Harrison to be able to jump on Zoom tomorrow for his schooling. So... We're going to keep pushing on another, about another 100 k's to somewhere that we are fairly confident there's going to be 
reasonable fine service for him to do with his call. Unfortunately, that means our little uh, expedition up to the old uh, air highway, and that's just going to have to wait for another time. We're going to have to leave that one this time. But let us know if you've ever made yeah, it there and we, drop some photos. Yeah, share some photos and stuff. Yeah. yeah, that's you starting school. That's right. Yeah. So, yeah, we're going to do that tonight, and then we're going to head off to Fowler's Bay tomorrow. So we're going to do this quick little little drive, go check into a rest area. There's nothing exciting there as far as we know. So I'd say the next time we'll see you will be tomorrow morning heading into Fowler's Bay. So we'll see you there. We'll see you there. Um, just Daddy side note, all the Wikicams reviews of the Nullarbor Roadhouse say it's amazing. The toilets are really clean. Everything's like the showers facilities are really good. And apparently the hamburgers and chips are worth stopping for. Well, yeah, kids are losing it. Time to put a show on. We'll see you guys in the morning. What's the new plan, Doc? Alright, good morning. <laughs> We're not in Fowler's Bay, surprise. <laughs> so, yeah, look, the plan's changed again, the situation's changed again, it happens. Um, yeah, look, our, my uncle who's been in hospital, uh, his situation's changed again. Um, it's a little bit more serious, I guess, than it was yesterday and the day before, so we're just, we're just gonna keep heading east. Um, I just, yeah, we need to close the distance. We're still, you know, a couple yeah. of thousand kilometres away and it's just too far at the moment to be away from family. We'd love to explore South Australia more and do a bit more, but it's going to have to wait for another time. It can wait. It'll always be here. Um, yeah, we've got to go and do what we've got to do. So, yeah. There's, yeah, the situation with changes quite rapidly and it's sort of like one minute it's fine and then the next minute it's not. So... You know, at first we felt a bit silly, like, driving all the way up here because, you know, we just dropped everything. And then they're like, oh, no, he's going to be fine. He's two weeks and you can't visit him anyway. So we thought, all right, we'll take it slow. And now it's, oh, uh, nah, maybe come back. <laughs> be here as soon as you can. Yeah, every time it changes, every time yeah. it gets worse, it's just, I don't know, you just feel so far away. So, look, thanks for sticking with us. Uh, thanks for bearing with us on this one. This is going to wrap up this episode. We're going to punch out now and just finish the last little bit of the Nullarbor and get down to Sejuna. Restock, refuel. In other news, though, we're gonna we're gonna take a couple of months off. We're gonna have a break from filming, but don't fear, you won't even notice the difference. <laughs> Next week, you're gonna time travel into the future. We're gonna send you on a little time travel experience. We're gonna go and spend some time with family. We've been now on the road for almost a year now. We're a couple of weeks off being on the road for a year, so we're gonna go and spend some time with family and friends and and do a few things that obviously we need we to do. And not very interesting to anyone else. If you want to see what we got up to during this break, we will keep posting on Instagram and Facebook as much as we can uh, with whatever we get up to. Who knows what we'll get up to. But for you here on YouTube, we'll see you next week for season two. Season two, I like season that. Season two of the Lifestyle Pioneers. We've got a heap in store, some big travel plans, some exciting stuff. Huge travel lots, plans. Lots of places that, you know, a bit off the beaten tracks. Reach out to us if you've got any questions or anything. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you next Sunday. See you next Sunday Cheers. in the future. Cheers, guys. Enjoy your time travel. Yeah. You're going to zoom forward <laughs> a few months. All right, guys. See you later. See ya. So we filled up before um, just back there in that little town back there. And, uh, cool yeah, what was that? Cool story. Cool story. <laughs> got, it's got something to do with the boys weekend. <laughs> you can't just be, be letting boys go on trips without you. That's what I say. <laughs> I thought you were just getting sick of me. Oh. You really, really need someone else to talk to. I think there's a marlin with my name on it this year. <gasps> oh, don't you have to get a tattoo if you catch one? Yep. Oh, where are you going to get that? Don't know. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> have you got your knickers in it, not dull? South Australia is weird. You get the green little signs as you're driving along with the first letter of the next town and how many k's you got to go. It's obviously always done as a multiple of five because that's what normal people would do. South Australia, no F's given. It's just random numbers like four or that one was 67. I mean, that's a prime number. What sort of monsters live here? This is ridiculous. Can't put a prime number as the distance. God. Just go another 2Ks and put the sign in and make it 65. Crazy. What will they think of next? I'm still hungry. Oh, are you hungry? Yeah. Something different.